So, it's been about a year since I came and did my first ride here with Rob from 184 Racing. He kind of took me out here on one of my first big rides and um, I decided to come back and ride again and kind of compare. So, enjoy a little bit of that. Yeah, I'm, that, up, I'm gonna go around because okay. it goes around, right? You go around. Okay. Something I started to notice after talking with Rob a little bit after this about standing while riding was that I probably need lower foot pegs because when I stand at full stature, my knees are beyond the seat. So I have to be almost squatting to kind of really pinch the seat or the tank. And if I want to be leaned over the bars, I got to be pinching the seat if I want to have any kind of grip. So I might consider some of those here in the near future. As you'll see here, I really stick to my own pace. Um, I just wanted to be comfortable and not worry about keeping up with the rest of them because they're very experienced riders and uh, there's no way I'm going to be keeping up with them through the, some of this stuff without crashing. So that's why you'll see a lot of sections where I'm just kind of by myself. I really just wanted to have fun and stay comfortable, which is what I did. Okay, like over there? So this hill has a little bit of rocks? Alright. Steep or anything? No rut, just a nice slow tractor up it. Okay, so basically I threw in those clips to kind of be silly because Rob underplays it so much. He's just too good. He He's too good. So this section was the most technical riding I've ever done. And keep in mind, the camera does not do it justice. It is way steeper than it looks. And it's just loose rocks the whole way up. Thankfully, he was right about the no ruts. But it wasn't just one or two. It was several of these hills, as you will see. But 
fun experience overall, and I really learned how important it is to have a fresh rear tire, unlike my cracked old one. And we'll go up and we'll wait at the top, and then there's another one before we get to the whole flat side. Okay. I need more speed. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, at this point, I literally thought that was the only hill we were going to do. And boy was I wrong, but boy was this fun. So here, you'll really be able to tell how loose the rocks were, and when I got stuck here, I really didn't know what to do, especially as you'll see, the tire is just spinning. And I mean, I do have some amount of tread, but, um, and I was still sitting at this point because I had no momentum, so I couldn't stand up yet. So yeah, comment below what you're kind of supposed to do in that situation where you just don't have a lot of traction. You're putting weight on the rear tire, but the rocks are just loose. I started smelling the clutch a little bit, and or maybe some rubber too, because it lost it quite a bit. But I finally made it up, as you'll see. And there goes Rob, making it look way too easy. I cleared it to go around. I'm guessing Tom has stopped there. Okay. And the next hill's 
easier than the acrylic. Wait, the, on the, so we're not going right is what you're saying? What's that? There's a wash? Yeah, just follow me. So that's pretty much the end of this part one. I'm gonna break it up into two segments as I come over here to the western side of this area. I think it's mostly BLM land. So that's why you see us going around gates because it is still technically accessible. Um, so yeah, and definitely accessible to the illegal migrants. If you look closely, I'll try to keep it in the video, but there's backpacks and random crap all over the place in some spots, so it's clearly... Um, coyotes are probably using these roads a bit to pick up groups of migrants, and Border Patrol is also using a lot of these roads year-round. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, subscribe for part two.